Welcome to another Bible in a Year Q&A episode. This is for the readings from October 16th through the 31st. And two questions that came in is, the first one's from Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 6. The question was, why slay little children? So, okay, well, what's the context? So the chapter 9, Ezekiel goes through a, a, a vision uh, where he, he sees executioners. These six executioners are going to go through the city, uh, there's the house, the temple of the Lord, and then they're going to go through the city and take out everybody. Uh, but God says, wait, 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 let me first have uh, the seal, uh, the mark, uh, or um, placed on the fo upon the foreheads of the men who sigh and groan upon the abominations that are committed therein, uh, particularly uh, in the temple. So it's pro most likely referring direct, more directly to worship uh, in the temple, some type of idolatrous, wicked worship going on in God's temple. Uh, and so he's, his, his spirit, he's leaving the temple, this image of, okay, he's departing. Uh, and then there's going to be a purging. Uh, and those men with who groan, well, can babies groan? Like, uh, you know, conscious? Well, no. All right. So it's, uh, you got to remember, when it's a vision, first of all. So it's more of God's, he's going to say, he's going to, he's going to cleanse his temple and his holy city. All right, so this is, this is really what he's getting at. Um, and we see in the book of Revelation, uh, there's this uh, a parallel of those who are marked uh, with the, the, the seal on their foreheads. Uh, and in Ezekiel, it's the actual, the, the mark that's referred to, it's in the translation doesn't give it, but it's actually an X. Uh, it's the letter Tau in Hebrew, uh, and at least Hebrew during, you know, the ancient time, the, the letters have changed slightly, so you can't like go look up one. Like, uh, but actually, the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet uh, in Ezekiel's day would have looked like it looks like a T, uh, like a cross. All right, and so we see there's kind of this mark uh, of protection over those who groan. Uh, and so, really, what's getting at the importance of uh, God's going to protect those who who hate uh, that which is opposed to Him. Uh, and for us as Christians, the importance of baptism. We're more marked, we're sealed with the blood of the Lamb. Uh, and we need to, we want to keep that, that seal on our on our, our person. So the face, the on their forehead or their face, when it says that, it's on their person, it's protection. And God's going to cleanse uh, you know, his, his holy city. And um, part of it is uh, in the news, you know, the book of Revelation. That, you know, we're going to get to that book soon. Uh, part of it's kind of God's going to cleanse the, at the end of time. He's going to cleanse uh, the church, uh, just as Jesus says, the kingdom of God is like a uh, a net, uh, and then the angels gather in the harvest and separate the good fish from the bad fish. All right, so there's this kind of separation that takes place. Um, so it's it's always uh, um, so uh, why why slay little children? Well, in the the sense of that you could even be very literalistic here. Well, it says uh, the foreheads of men who sigh and groan. Well, I guess the the women are out of luck then because they're not men, so they can't. No, it's referring to men, male and female. All right, that is referring to human. <laughs> uh, and so it's the, the main thrust of it is uh, those who uh, God will protect uh, those whose hearts are, are in line with Him. Uh, and he's going to he's going to cleanse his holy temple in the next in, in his holy city, which uh, kind of uh, in the book of Revelation really is kind of we see more fully kind of the church. All right. And Jesus speaks of this cleansing at the end of time. Um, uh, the second question is from Sirach, chapter 11, verse 34. And uh, I remember when I, I was reading this, I thought that's something of this, too. I'm like, well, that's kind of weird. It's uh, verse. Let me pull it up here. Receive a stranger into your home, and he will upset your, you with commotion and will estrange you from your family. So essentially it's saying, uh, don't let strangers in your home. <laughs> well, stranger danger. Uh, <laughs> I'll give you that verse. Um, but it says even earlier in verse 29, Do not bring every man into your home, for many are the wiles of the crafty. Uh, so the question is, I thought we should welcome strangers into our homes. And in doing so, uh, we may have entertained angels. So that's a reference to the, the book of uh, um, Hebrews, uh, toward the end of Hebrews, chapter 13 in Hebrews. It's referring to uh, Abraham and 
uh, Sarah welcoming three three visitors uh, and actually kind of Jew, uh, Jewish tradition and Christian tradition, kind of these angels, these messengers representing God himself, even the three three angels in Christian tradition as the Trinity. Uh, but, uh, you know, well, wait, wait, doesn't this say now tell, tells us not to welcome strangers? Well, it's the book of Sirach. It's one of the books of the wisdom literature. And so it's giving uh, advice uh, and really got to look deeper. Okay, it's how does this apply? Well, uh, the importance earlier, it says, do not bring every man into your home, for many are the wiles of the crafty, verse 29. Then it says, receive a stranger into your home, and he will upset your commo with commotion. He will estrange you from your family. Uh, really, it's saying, don't just let anybody in your home, all right? Um, because they might cause, cause havoc. See, this importance of discernment. And well, how do I do that? Well, it's first of all, uh, trial and error, uh, learning from others, others' experience, their advice, and also, Lord, I need your I need your help. I need your grace to be able to, to see what I can't see and so I can make good decisions. Um, uh, but even, even on a practical point, um, even if... Uh, you know, even where it's, you know, the importance of welcoming strangers, even in uh, concrete situations, it's not always uh, wise to welcome the stranger, especially if you have a family <laughs> uh, and you're, you need to protect your family. Uh, and, and so it may be safe. Well, I, I can't let you stay here, but you know, we can help you and get connected. All right. So there's even this sense of prudence of, okay, I need to still protect my family. Uh, and so this, this area of discernment, which uh, in the wisdom literature, uh, it, uh, even Proverbs in particular will speak of the simple uh, need to learn wisdom. Kind of wisdom teaches the simple. Well, I thought it was supposed to be simple, yes. Simple in the sense of not kind of worldly, but really kind of on the important things. But there's a certain simplicity uh, that, that isn't good where I kind of, well, I'm just going to not really use my head. No, we're supposed to use our head. Uh, and the importance of just whiz, uh, wisely thinking things through is this is this a good thing to do uh, or not uh, and so the in the book of wisdom really to help us kind of open our mind to our hearts to, to better discerning and recognizing well I need God's grace you know the sun's right in my eyes uh, I'm on fire ah! okay um, I should have closed the shades for this, this video um, See, yeah. Um, so yeah, the welcoming the strangers. Yes, it, 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 you know, good. But there's also this prudential measure that it's saying. It's saying, you know, don't. And even with friends, you know, don't let, welcome anyone as your friend. Uh, you know, this proper, this good discernment that's needed. Don't confide into anybody, but first test your friend. See if this person is actually uh, loyal. That they're, they're trustworthy. Uh, same with a stranger. Okay, don't just let anyone in. See, are they, are they, are they? Can I trust this person? Um, and there's different ways you can help. You don't have to always let them in your home to, to help them. Uh, and so this, this importance of just discernment. So those are the, the two I probably spoke a little longer than I needed to on that second one. But uh, please keep the questions coming. Uh, and I know we're almost, almost through the entire year uh, with this Bible in a year. God bless.